What's going on, man? It's your boy, Jay Holly, and we are back with another episode of Unfiltered with Jesse Holly, episode 68. Woo! You could have been anywhere in the world, but I am so glad that you are here with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are all far too kind. I am Jesse Holly, the sports talk equivalent of Braille. People feel me when I I speak. You guys know what you got to do. Like, subscribe, hit the notification button. Um, when you see this episode, it'll be 68 of these things out there. 67 was fire. I had company. We had company. My boy Brian brought us out uh, and we laid out some great content, man. So go check that out. Um, put this in your group chat, man. Put this in the family group chat. Put this in your calendar, your notifications. We on Apple, we on Spotify. It's Mr. Fourth and Long on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Fanatics, uh, Fanatics View. Go to the YouTube page, Unfiltered with Jesse Holly. Check the clips page out. We outside. We outside, and you got to be tuned in and locked in and understanding what we got going on here, man. But you guys know how I like to get down. I like to give my motivation at the beginning because let's be honest. A lot of you are not going to be here at the end. I am not for everybody, but remember, before you go, find three episodes, listen to them for 15 minutes apiece. And if you haven't decided that you love me by then, find three more episodes. Find three more episodes and keep listening until I become everything that you need me to be in your life. All right, man, let's get into this motivation. Um, I got a quick story, and it's not a story, but it's a, it's a motivational story. Have you ever heard about the dog and the elephant? Well, there was this dog and there was this elephant, and they were friends. And the dog and the elephant got pregnant at the same time. Um, six weeks later, six months later, three, month, three months later, the dog delivers a dozen puppies. And then he heals up, and then in six more months, the dog has 12 more puppies. And then it heals up and the dog has 12 more puppies. And the dog begins to, the, the dog begins to say, you know, to the elephant, um, are you sure that you're pregnant? Because I, we got pregnant at the same time. And I've already been through three cycles of pregnancies, had a dozen puppies each time uh, that I was pregnant and you still haven't given birth. And the elephant said back to the dog, so the difference is, I have an elephant inside of me. You have puppies. When what's inside of me comes out, the earth moves. When what's inside of me comes out and walks across the street, people stop in amazement. So what you have to remember, ladies and gentlemen, is that sometimes there are going to be puppies and dogs who have blessings after blessings after blessings. And you may sit back and you may wonder, like the dog, why aren't you getting your blessings? But you have to keep the mindset of the elephant. The elephant understands that my blessing is so much more profound, so much more dominant, that I have to appreciate the time that it takes to get there. So if you're looking around and you're wondering why everyone else around you is getting blessed and everyone around you is getting the thing that they dreamed about and talked about and you haven't. Keep the mindset of the elephant that when your blessing comes, it's going to move the earth. That when your blessing comes, people stop and look in amazement. That when your blessing comes, it's going to be whole. It's going to be huge. It's going to be an elephant. It's not going to be a puppy. It's going to be gigantic. So if you're having that feeling today of wondering and wishing when your blessing is going to come, when your birth is going to happen, I'm here to tell you that what's inside of you is the size of an elephant. And that takes about two years time for an elephant to have a baby. So hold on. Your blessing is on the way. All right. All right, man, let's get into this show. The draft is around the corner. April 25th, the NFL draft begins. You guys know that I'm, this is a, you know, for me, I cover the Cowboys, been a Cowboy. Uh, so the Cowboys have their 30 visits. Now the 30 visits, let me make an understanding. Let me make a distinction. 30 visits and the Dallas day are two separate situations. 
Dallas Day is when the Cowboys get to invite those players who have Texas high school roots. So no matter where they play college football at, any part of the country they play college football at, if they have Texas high school roots, if they played at Allen, if they played at DeSoto, if they played at Plano East or Plano West or Plano Senior or Louisville, whoever, whatever the Texas uh, uh, school is, and there's a parameter around where you can do it in the DFWA. When Dallas has its Dallas Day, it's for Dallas DFW athletes who have high school ties. So that's separate. They had that the other day. That's done and that's finished. The 30 visits, the 30 visits are guys who are draft eligible from anywhere. You get 30 of them. You don't have to use 30 of them, but what you get a chance to do is, of course, there's the combine. And the combine, when you meet with those players, you're on the clock. You don't have all night and all day to meet with these players. You got to get these players in. You got to get these players out. Um, but when you bring them in for your 30 visit, they can be here for two days, three days, two days. Um, you can wine and dine them. You can spend as much time with them as, as necessary. If you want to spend five hours, six hours a day, if you want to have coaches spend. Now, this is something that I'm broken down with scouts and with coaches and, and front office people may meet them in a, in a brief setting. Um, but they have their 30 visits set. Again, you don't have to use all of them. And I want to give credit on um, I got this list uh, from Nick Harris over at DallasCowboys.com. And, and Nick did a great job with listing this thing out. Just want to list some names off to you to see kind of where the Cowboys are headed. And if you watch their 30 visit, their 30 visit is very intentional. These are the guys that are probably going in, 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 in day one, day two. But their, their list is very intentional. There's a theme to what they're looking for improving on their football team. And if you're, if you're looking at Mike McCarthy, if you're looking at the Joneses, you got to come to the conclusion – that they aren't going to be a free agent heavy team. You got to remember, Mike McCarthy, when he was in Green Bay, his whole organizational plan was draft develop. He wasn't one that got a lot of chance to pick his players. It was a kind of a different system there. So he is accustomed to drafting and developing players. That, that was the model that he was under in Green Bay for all of those years. And, you know, and Steven and Jerry kind of have that old school model as well where they're not looking to go out and grab a bunch of free agent talent. They're not looking to bring in guys that aren't from. They're looking to draft and develop. And they've done some good areas in that, and they've had some not good areas in that. But that is the approach. The approach is that they want to draft and develop. So here are some of the names. Um, you got uh, uh, Fuga, Fuga, Fuga from Oregon State, the offensive tackle. Trey Benson, the running back from Florida State. Bucky Irvin, the other running back from Oregon. Uh, Jackson Power Johnson, the center from Oregon. Uh, Tay, we got we, we, your guys on here. Edrin Cooper from A&M. Giggum. Talking about Giggums out there. Uh, who we got? We got Traven Wallace, linebacker from Kentucky. Jonathan Brooks. That's going to be an interesting one. I think Jonathan Brooks might be a Cowboy next year. It's I know he had the ACL injury. He got his surgery done by Dr. Cooper, who is the team doctor for the Cowboys. That also was recommended by former Dallas Cowboy running back, current Texas Longhorn running back coach, Tashar Choice. When he was looking at doing the surgery, he said, go to Dr. Cooper. That's what he did. My knee surgery. So there's some ties in there. So they'll do some more medical checks uh, when they have the 30 visit with um, with, with Jonathan Brooks, uh, running back uh, Braylon Allen from Wisconsin, offensive lineman uh, Graham Barton from Duke, Darius Robinson, defensive end from Missouri, linebacker Junior Colson from Michigan. I don't know, stay away from Michigan. Guy. I'm just, that's just, that's just, that's just, that's just me. Offensive tackle Mac Conclaves from Pittsburgh, Jonathan, uh, Nathaniel Watson, Mississippi State linebacker, uh, Jonathan McGee, Temple, uh, Peyton, um, Peyton Wilson, linebacker from NC State. That's another one that's really looking like the Cowboys like him a lot. Uh, defensive tackle from Texas. Uh, Byron Murphy's from Texas, right? Murphy? From Dallas, too, right. Uh, uh, they have him on here. Uh, another running back, um, Rasheen Ali. Um, and uh, your boy Sweat. Sweat. Sweat's coming in. 
Sweat's coming in too. So there, this this is very this is very very much so what the Cowboys are looking at as far as offensive lineman, running back, linebacker, defensive tackle. Like those are the four spots that they're looking at right now to not only add a first round pick uh, to, but a lot of their other round picks there, because you just can't go with one of those guys. You got to go and get you a couple of those guys. And this is the year for the offensive lineman um, to be, because they're, I mean, tackles, centers, guards, there's a bunch of them out there. So the Cowboys will really be looking to fill in some of those spots. And I know a lot of people are like, go out and draft, guys. I mean, go out and sign guys as free. That's not their style. They're, they're, they're not doing that. That's not what they want to do. And you know, I'm not the draft guy. I don't get into draft stuff. That's not my wheelhouse. Now, what I get into is once they draft the guys, once they bring the guys in, once the guys are on the football team, that's when I start breaking guys. I don't have the time, energy, or knowledge or effort or want to go and look at guys like my guy Brian Broaddus and Jeff Cavanaugh and other guys like that who watch hundreds and hundreds of guys on tape. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you or try to talk to you about what prospects I think or what. Now, when the guy gets drafted by this team, when the guy signs with this team, that's when I'll break film down. That's when I'll go, you, go and show you how I think they fit, what are their skill sets, how does it work in this team. I ain't watching 100 guys. I'm telling you that right now. I ain't watching 100 guys. I'm not. I'm, I'm not picking up film from a guy who is at Valdasta State. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to look at the Holy Cross Center. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to look at the receiver from Grambling State. No, I'm not. I'm not. That's just not. There are far enough guys out there and on YouTube that will give you that content. If you're looking for that unfiltered with Jesse Holly, this is not the channel for you. This is the trust and believe you me. Now, when the season gets here, I'm going to break these boys down. I'm going to break team down. I'm going to break the Cowboys down. I ain't doing that draft stuff. But those are some of the names that will be coming into town this Thursday uh, for the 30 visit for the Cowboys um, and so shout out to Nick Harris for, for that, uh, for that list. Um, women's college basketball. If you've been living under a rock and that's okay, this is, that's okay. And I'm not going to come out here and sit here and, and, and try to be the person that's saying that I am, I am captain women's basketball. I am a sports fan. I, um, I dabble in all sports. Basketball is my first love. You guys know that already. Um, I do watch women's basketball, both WNBA and college. Um, We can, we can, I can, I can boldly say and confidently say that this has been the year of women's college basketball. It is dominated in ratings. It is dominated in viewership. It is dominated in conversation over the men's. Over the men's and last night, we got another showing. And it's hard when you start talking about, you know, key matchups. When you start talking about games that matter and you want to see players and schools. And sometimes those games don't live up to the hype. Sometimes those players don't live up to the hype. And we've all been a part of it. Um, we've seen games that, that, that have this monumental buildup and are duds. And last night, I think as a family... I think as a societal family, as a sports family, when the matchup came out, the, the, the NCAA, the people who made the brackets and who put teams where and what and when and the networks and the sponsorships, whatever God that they believed in, whatever God that they prayed to, whatever God that they pay homage to, whoever that is, Jesus, Allah, Buddha, if you were an atheist, I didn't matter. Whatever you prayed to, we got our sports prayers answered last night. We got a chance to see Iowa and Caitlin Clark and what she is and what she's done. We got a chance to see LSU and Angel Reese 
and and and, and Fly J and and Kim Mulkey and and all that they bring. We got to see those guys, and, and of course, this dates back to last year. This dates back to the Caitlin Clark. You know, you can't see me. It goes back to the ring me from Angel Reese and the crown. And it it had fanfare. It had excitement. It had storyline. It had white versus black. It had Iowa versus LSU. It had Twitter divided. It was everything that you want a sports moment to be. And it lived up to the hype. And I was so excited for the game for the women's game, that there was, because these are the type of things that can make or break a sport. When there is a matchup that is, that is billed, that had top billing, and you get to that and it doesn't show, you won't get hype for the next time around. And I think this gave us that, it, it, it was the buildup, we saw, we saw the trains coming. We saw how the brackets were broken down, and they said, this, this is going to be it. This is going to be what we want. And boy, did we get a show last night. Caitlin Clark, 41 points uh, in a dominating game. And you, and you know what makes you know what makes it great? What makes it great is to be able to, to watch it as a community. Uh, that's the, one of the plus about social media is when we decide that we're going to watch an event – or there's an event happening, and we, we, this is a family thing. It's a white, black, purple, yellow, orange, Republican. It's a family thing. And we watch this game, and I always know when something – here's how you know when something is successful is when the jokes start to happen. When, when the jokes start to fly and the memes start to come, that's when you know that this is, this is an event that everybody's watching. Uh, it, and it was. It was truly an event – that if you looked at anyone's timeline last night from about you know, 6.30 Central Time till about 8.30 Central Time, 9 o'clock, it was all LSU, Iowa, Iowa, LSU. It was Caitlin Clark. It was, it was uh, Haley Van Lith. It was Angel Reese. It was, mo- it was everything. And we watched it as a community, and we got what we wanted. We got a game that was, that was built uh, with excitement, and Caitlin Clark – Angel Reese, the two headlining stars of that, showed up. They played well. We had Angel Reese go out with the ankle injury. The, the one thing I would say, the one thing I would say is um, Iowa won the, won, the, won, the, won the contest, and they'll move on to the Final Four. But I thought LSU had the better team. I thought LSU hands down had the better team. I thought Iowa, hands down, had the better player. And that's the one thing when you talk about team versus player. Um, in the team sport, basketball is the one place where if a guy or girl gets hot, it doesn't matter if your team is better. They can take over a game, and they can make shot after shot after shot. And I think that's what Kate and Clark did last night. I thought Kim Mokey's defensive strategy was – you, you, she got put in a blender. For whatever reason, she thought, and her staff, they thought that, hey, here's what we're going to do. We're going to try to put Haley Van Lith on the best women's scorer that we have in basketball today. And boy, did Haley get cooked. Kayla, there, there's a quote that was flying around last night, and it, it was funny. It's a true quote. It's from Larry Bird, and, and Larry Bird, he, he talked about in his playing days, you know, he, he said, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't really care who guards me, black, white, purple, green, whatever. He goes, but just don't put a white guy on me. He said, you put a white guy on me, that's disrespectful. That's disrespectful to my game. And that's from Larry Bird. Larry Bird talked like that. He said, don't put, don't put no white guy. Can't no white guy stay in front of me. You had to put a brother, a Martian, an alien. Don't put the white guy on me. No, don't, don't put the white guy on me. And that was like, that was a theme last night. It was like, you could guard anybody. You could have anybody guard Kate and Clark. Don't have the white girl guard Kate and Clark. And Haley Van Lith got cooked. She and the meme is going around. Uh, Caitlin Clark hit a three, and, and Haley Van Lith is just like, 
I don't know, man. I, I don't. That's because the sideline coach. What you want me to do? I thought I thought that defensive strategy was was one that wasn't good. And then you let another player. You let two more. And if you're going to let Caitlin get forty, then you can't let the others get fifteen, sixteen, seventeen plus. And they had two players um, that had sixteen plus points um, on Iowa. So if you can't have those, the girls get. Um, I think it was 23 and 16 or something like that, and Caitlin get 40. You just can't have that. You can't have that. Um, but what a matchup. What a matchup. And it just goes to show that women's basketball has, um, has really taken a turn for the better. Uh, and, and Angel Reese, she has 48 hours to decide whether she's going to go pro or not. Um, I'm assuming Caitlin Clark, the same thing. I mean, they, they're all going to probably go pro. They're probably going to make more money if they stayed in college with all the NIL deals and the partnerships. But I'm sure they have some deals and partnerships that will travel with them to the WNBA. But they're making money hand over fist in, um, in, in college. I mean, Ice Cube even offered uh, Caitlin Clark $5 million to play in the big three. That's a, that's a story for another day. Um, but I get, I get the businessman part of that. I would have all my games in Iowa. It would be a sold out. I would play Iowa seven times. I would play in Iowa seven times or around Iowa seven times, and I know that I will get a sold out crowd every single time. But, um, boy, what a, what a game. And I, I have to admit, I have to admit, because that wasn't the only game of the night. The other game of the night was UConn and Paige Beckers versus USC and, and Juju Watkins. And – if I'm being totally honest with you guys, the first game had so much build up. The pace was fast. It was I was into it. I was tired by the second game. I don't know if I gave the second game it's just due. I don't know if I gave Juju Watkins. And, and Juju is building. Juju broke the record of having the most points by a freshman. Paige Becker, who's been one of the best players in the country. She's been in sixth grade. She's dealt with injury. Um, she set out all last year. Uh, and so now she's kind of getting her footing back and she's putting her name back in that conversation. And if you're a fan of the sport, you know that Paige Beckers is a dog. You know that she could straight up hoop. And Juju Walker is another one who was, who was on. The, you know, I also had a question. This is completely sidebar. Is there any pictures out there of Juju who, when she doesn't have her hair up in that top bun? I don't think I've ever seen her hair like not up in that top bun. Not, not that I'm looking for, but I'm just like, she has that bun in every commercial and every picture and every everything and every game. I'm like, she'll never switch it up. But that's in here though there. Um, I don't know if I gave – I didn't give that second game enough energy. I, I was tired. I was – I all my – I made a joke last night. I said all my progesterone was if, – if you're a woman, you know what progesterone is. It was all out. It was all out uh, for that second game. But – Man, uh, kudos to women's basketball. I do have to give another shout out because when you start talking about the game, that was built up well. But the commentary, like the the pregame, um, L. Duncan, um, uh, 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 Andrea Carter, and uh, and Chini, uh, Chini Abumake, my God, they were fantastic. They were insightful. They were energetic. They had great chemistry. They were. It was. It was. It was. It was. It was hands down great from start to finish. I watched the highlights of the USC UConn game, and it was. A, it was fantastic. It was fantastic. It was a fantastic night for women's college basketball, for women's basketball in general, and the stars showed up. The stars showed out. Um, the commentary was great. Everything about it was fantastic. And we get a chance to see more of uh, Caitlin Clark in the next round. We get to see the South Carolina women and Dawn Staley. We get to see Paige Becker. There was a run for UConn where they went to the Final Four like nine years in a row. And, you know, Gino RM is doing a great job. And he doesn't get the credit he gets, you know, right now. Half of his team is hurt. Like half of his team is absolutely in street clothes. But they got Paige Becker's. And if you got if you got one dog on your team, sometimes that's that's enough. And they they find themselves um, in the Final Four. And another interesting story: NC State women are in the Final Four. UConn men's and women's teams are in the Final Four. NC State 
men's and women are in the final four. I don't know if that's ever happened before where two schools have both had both men and women in the final four at the same time. But UConn's men and women's are in the final four as well as uh, NC State. And speaking of NC State, uh, on the men's side, uh, the Cinderella story of NC State continues. And you all know I'm a Tar Heel, and so it pains me a little bit. It pains me. It pains me, my boys. Uh, I got to be fair. I got to be fair. Alabama packed my boys up. I, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it one bit. Uh, Nate Oates and company packed my boys up, sent us on back to Chapel Hill. Um, but the ACC is still representing. The ACC is still representing. And um, what a story. NC State, the 11 seed, um, they have had a run. Uh, they, entered the NC, they entered the ACC tournament, needing to win it, needing to win the ACC tournament to get into the NCAA. They would have been out. Their coach on the brink of firing. Their coach of being fired. He's on the brink of being fired. They get into the ACC tournament. They win five games and five days. They beat my Tar Heels in the ACC championship to get an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. Um, I believe they played in the play in one of the playing games um, as an 11 seed. Um, and won that game. But what a what a fantastic and historical moment for NC State. But I, I do want to just, I, I want to highlight something. Because we, we get a lot of times into this talk of uh, an NC State, their men's uh, team has been dubbing the, the Why Not Us. Shout out to my guy, Lavelle Moten, the head coach at North Carolina Central in, in North Carolina. Uh, he's been on Twitter. He, and he's a Raleigh native. Um, grew up in Raleigh, supports Raleigh, uh, is the head coach at NC Central. But NC Central, Chris Paul's company had directed um, a documentary about them a year or so ago called Why Not Us. So now he's on Twitter and he's like, listen, y'all can borrow Why Not Us, but y'all going to have to send us a little bit of that money that y'all making in a tournament because we own the rights to Why Not Us. Y'all making T-shirts and y'all made that y'all slogan, but we got the copyrights to Why Not Us from our documentary that that uh, that their company did, but one of the things that I do want to talk about, and I think this is this is this is interesting. This is very 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 um, interesting because we get a, we talk a lot about about players and nil deals and how it's changed college um, athletics in general, but I don't think we talk enough because here here's always my pushback as someone who played two sports at a Division one level, and yes, coaching is important, but for a long time, coaches have made millions and millions and millions. And the NCAA has made millions and billions on the backs of players. And players, they get the short end of the stick for a long time. And they also get ridiculed and criticized from fans and media alike. Uh, when they leave these schools, when they make commitments and decommit, when they come for a year and enter the transfer portal. Um, but we never say anything about, well, you know, when, when one coach gets fired, they go and hire another coach right now. That, that coach leaves that school. We never talk about those coaches who sat in those living rooms and made those promises to those kids and said, I'm going to help raise your young woman uh, or your young man into a, 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 an adult. And they leave for the next high paying job. Or we never talk about just how much money these coaches actually make. I mean, we, we joke about it, you know, even at, at, at A&M with, with Jimbo Fisher. They fired Jimbo Fisher, and they owe Jimbo Fisher $78 million to do nothing, to literally do nothing. Vanderbilt uh, fired Tar Heel alum Jerry Stackhouse. They owe him $15 million dollars then all that's money is made on the back of these athletes and so um kevin keats he's the head coach at nc state and this is a guy who was on the brink of being fired on the brink of being fired 
And had not his player hit a shot that set the game in the overtime versus Virginia, well, they go on and beat Virginia, and they end up that ended up propelling them to win the ACC tournament, he would be out of a job. And over the last 17 days, he's going from that close from being out of a job. Let me give you some of the bonuses that that Kevin Keese has got. He went from probably being fired to a buzzer beater versus Virginia to winning the ACC uh, championship, and now he finds his team in the Final Four. And this is the first time they've been in the Final Four since 1983. Jim Valvano, they beat that Houston team. Um, that's, that's, that's one of the Jim Valvano highlights. But by winning the ACC, he got an automatic two-year contract extension. So that pushes his current contract to 2030. So automatically he got that. Um, he got a $500,000 raise that he'll start getting next season, and that will run. That $500,000 would be $500,000 between every single year added on to his contract to 2030. Um, so here are some of the bonuses that he also got. $100,000 for winning the ACC championship. He got $25,000 for getting an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament. He got another $25,000 for winning his first game in the NCAA tournament. He got $50,000 for every win that the team made after their first victory. He got $50,000 for just beating Purdue. Um, he'll get an additional $150,000 if they win the national championship. In addition to that, if they win the national championship, that bonus that I said that he got in the final thousand dollar raise, that moves to six hundred thousand dollars for the duration every year on his contract, and that doesn't even count. He had he is almost up for three more bonuses for the academics for these college athletes every single year. Coaches, if you have a, a portion of the team that does a certain GPS, a, a GPS, a certain GPA. Um, and our, you know, your academic standards are up there, you get $20,000, $25,000. You know, so, so he has made a boatload of money. Now, I'm not saying that Kevin Keats doesn't deserve this. Kevin Keats ain't take one shot. Kevin Keats ain't shot one layup. Kevin Keats ain't made one defensive slide, ain't boxed out one time. He's been the coach, and that matters. But before we go and we 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 we, we – ostracize these athletes for wanting and trying to get all the money that they can, just know that there are a bunch of coaches who are making a boatload of money off the backs of these players. And, and NC State, they, 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 their players, um, you look at uh, DJ Burns, the big boy, the big fella, who, by the way, Jim Nagy, who is the senior um, uh, a guy who runs the senior bowl, and he's been on Twitter, he's been like, man, this dude could play in the NBA, I mean the NFL. And he said even there's a bunch of GMs that have saying, like, if this NBA thing don't work out for him, I would love to invite him to camp. Some say try him at left tackle because uh, he's about six foot eight, six foot nine. I don't care what they say in the, in the program. He ain't 279. He ain't 279. He three bills on a light day. He three bills after a good boo-boo. You know when you take that good you when you take that good boo-boo and you be like, whew, I'm 10 pounds lighter on one of them days, he three bills. That boy 330. He 330 easy. Easy. 6'9, 330. Might be a left tackle. Might be a a, 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 a plug up the middle defensive tackle. I don't out, but now, before we just start throwing anybody in the NFL, you got to have that dog in you now. You gotta have a little dog in you, especially if you're gonna play in them trenches. See, it ain't like it ain't like Gates, it ain't like uh, uh, Gonzalez, it ain't it ain't like Jimmy Graham, it ain't like Jesse Holly. When you play on that perimeter, when you got to get down there in them trenches with them dog, with them real horse, them real hogs, that's a different monster. That's a different monster. But this NC State team, man, you know, in the NCAA men's side, I think I do still believe that the women have a bigger name right now. But you're starting to see the storylines happen. UConn, 
they're on the verge, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't see nobody beating them, bros. I don't. UConn, man, shout out to Hurley. He's a Jersey dude. He got them play like they from Jersey, but UConn, monsters. Uh, Purdue has finally gotten the the the. I don't know if they gotten the respect, but they finally done enough that people say, you know what? About time, about time. Y'all have had really good teams, number one seeds. Uh, they've finally gotten in there. Of course, the NC State story, what they've done in the last month, month and a half, uh, with their record run. And then you got the football school. You got Alabama uh, in the Final Four. So, so, so the men's side are gaining some some storylines. They don't have the star power. They don't have the Clayton Clark. They don't have the Juju Walker. They don't have the Angel Reese. They don't have – Dawn Staley and company, they don't have those names, the Paige Beckers of the world. And I think that's the difference. I think the NC, the men's game has great storylines, but I think the women's game have bigger superstars right now. But it's all good for us as fans because we get to watch either way. Um, but right now, to me, I'm still taking the women's the women's uh, 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 NCAA tournament runs is, is a little bit more interesting to me than the men's. Um, Keeping it in, keeping it in the college ranks. It, this pains my heart because I got to do it. I got to do it. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be me if I didn't. Um. Y'all know how I felt about Deanna Colorado. Y'all know how I felt about Deanna Colorado. I, I was a, and I still am a fan. I, I still am a fan. But I think Dion made his first and maybe might be. I, and I don't want to jump out the window. I don't want to jump out the window. But I think D, D, Dion may have made his first real big, and it could be fatal flaw. Dion Sanders has hired Warren Sapp to be his defensive line coach. Now, I don't want to be too hard on Sap. I, I, I don't want to be too hard on Sap. But I have to be honest with you. Nothing about his hiring makes me comfortable. Nothing about bringing the personality of Warren Sap. And here is, because Warren Sap, if you're talking about credentials alone, he's a Hall of Fame player, Super Bowl winning champ, you know, defensive tackle. But my, my issue is this. One, there is a difference from being a Hall of Fame player and being knowledgeable of the game and or position. There is something completely different than being able to be transferable, translatable, and to coach it. Like, for example, Michael Jordan would make a horrible coach because he would just tell you, just do it, just jump, just fly. And everybody can't. Some of the most, some of the best coaches weren't star players. Because it's 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 one thing to have this God-given talent that you, yes, you work and you hone it in, but Steph's shooting ability would be hard to be taught. Steph has it. He can, he can teach shooting, but he can't teach you to shoot like him. Right? And I think that's the thing about Warren Sapp. It, Warren Sapp has a wealth of knowledge. He, does Warren Sapp know how to play the defensive line? 100% yes. You don't have a gold jacket if you don't know how to play that position. But does he know how to teach it to 17, 18, 19, 20-year-olds? That part I don't know. That part I don't know. And then the history of Warren Sapp. Go, go, go Google him. Like, I, I'm afraid. I'm afraid Warren Sapp on a college campus. <laughs> And I probably shouldn't say this, but that, that worries me. That worries me. I mean, he showed it the first day and he got the mohawk. Like, who the hell still wears a mohawk? Like, even the haircut, I'm just like, the haircut is like he's trying to fit in. Oh, my God. And the last thing I need is Warren Sapp at a frat party. Warren Sapp 
down at 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 at, at the Greek row, at 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 the, at the pub, because Warren Sapp he gonna drink. He gonna drink. And I've been to college. I've been to college. You people that are watching this, a lot of you have been to college. And you know at times what those scenes look like. And I just, I, I, and maybe he's turned the corner. That worries me a little bit. Because those college parties can get a little bit, those college pubs, you can go and drink for cheap on college campuses. You go get those fish bowls for five dollars, and they got a concoction that you ain't never heard of. Put you in your butt. So I've heard. And I don't know if this higher. This is one of those highs that may bring down the Carter. So all my people who watch New Jack City. So I'm hoping that Warren Sapp is able to know how to coach. And, 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 and to hone in the skills to young athletes because there is a difference. You're not, you're not talking to the developed men in the league. You're talking to young kids. And, 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 and Dion hired them. I'm going I'm, to I'm believe in Dion. I'm going to believe. I believe. But I don't know. I believe. But I don't know. This may be crazy. This may be a crazy hire. And if, 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 if things go south for Warren Sapp, that's going to be a stain on the jacket of Deion Sanders because he hired him. He told the powers that be that this is going to be the right hire. So he will have to eat some of that if this goes wrong. And he gets, he gets a ton of credit if it goes right. If it goes right, he gets a ton of credit. But let's... I don't know. That's a, speaking of uh, uh, still being in a line of crazy, um, Rishi Rice, wide receiver uh, of the Kansas City Chiefs, he's in the news. He's in the news. And boy, what a dummy. What an absolute meathead. Rice and company were here locally in Dallas, caused a six-car accident with a Corvette. He and his friends were in a Corvette and in a Lamborghini, and they're racing down the highway at high speeds and caused a six-car accident. But that's not the bad part. The bad part is, after the accident occurred, they left. They left the scene. And just left the cars there. Both cars, one registered in his name, one rented in his name. And Chris Carter took some heat for this. But I think this was, I think this is one of those things that I, I, Chris Carter was right. And Chris Carter said it publicly. What probably should have stayed in private. But he was right. Chris Carter told a group of NFL uh, 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 draftees at, at, at the rookie symposium, he said, get a fall guy. And maybe he shouldn't have said it publicly. Maybe pull a few guys to the side and say it privately. But Chris Carter is absolutely right. One, dumb as hell. Speeding up and down the highway, that's dumb. But if we smoking and we drinking and we a little drunk, whatever, and this happens, if I'm, if I'm rice... Guys, I'm I can't I'm the money. I'm the money. I, I'm the only one in this group who has the ability to make quadruple of what he's worth. No offense to you bums, but unless y'all hit the scratch off lottery or hit the mega millions, none of y'all have the ability to produce the amount of money that I can produce. Remember the part in, 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 in the Batman movie, it was Dark Knight Rises, where, where Bane is getting off the plane and they're all about to leave the plane. And he goes, and the guy's like, I'm ready to go. He's like, no, one of us has to stay with the crash. And they all parachute out and the one stays with the plane. As it crashes to the ground, 
They put the blood in him, and he's like a survivor of the plane. Someone in that crew has to stay with the cars. Now that, yes, the cars are registered in, 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 in uh, Rasheed Rice's name, but he could simply say, oh, I was at home. They had the cars. I was at the house chilling. They, that, that's on them. And, yeah, the damages will pay for that. But now you have damages to pay for. Now you're about to have criminal charges brought against you. Because remember, we're in 2024. Me heads. Everything is on video. Whether it be dash cam, whether it be the, the, the highway or tollway cameras, you're not getting away. Everything is on video. And so now the person who was able to quadruple his worth with his talents will probably be suspended by his team and or the NFL will probably take a major hit in lawsuits because ain't no way now. Because, oh, now that I know there's an NFL player, you know what? I may have said that my back was OK. But I was I was in such an emotional state. Ah, the pain came later. Civil suits are on the way. Someone else has got to take the hit. I got to have a fall guy. Chris Carter said it to y'all. The prophet Chris Carter said it years ago. You dummies need to listen. If these guys going to hang out with you, they're going to drink and smoke on your dime and put their funky feet up on your couch and play your video games and want tickets to the games and want to drink all the liquor in your, in, your, in, your, in your section, then they have to know, hey, listen, your license may get suspended after this, but that's fine because we're going to get them back eventually. But my name can't be in this. I can't be on video. But they got you on video. They got you on video. Let this be a lesson to a lot of the other young athletes. Um, young athletes out there, man. If you're going to have a crew, maybe I shouldn't be saying private, publicly what Chris Carter said publicly. But you better have a guy that's going to take the fall. If you're not going to have illegal stuff in the car, your name can't be in, a, in, in, in the print. When they get pulled over, they got to know this is your stuff. Hey, listen, we get pulled over. You're taking this stuff. I can quadruple my worth. I can, I can call it. If I get locked up, you don't have the money to get me out. You don't have the lawyers to get me out. You don't have the cachet to get me out. If you get locked up, I can post your bail like that. And we, got, we can take in legal stuff later on. But, boy, some of you young people, man, y'all need to know, understand and know that if y'all going to be out here doing some wild stuff, uh, y'all better, better have a few fall guys. All right, man, that's it for my show, man. We appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for always being here with me. I love you, and thank you so much for always doing that. Remember, Mr. Fulton Long, Instagram, Twitter, on Facebook. Follow us on Fanatic Views, YouTube, um, uh, 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 Unfiltered with Jesse Holly. You see the logo. You see the name. Go ahead and like it, subscribe, hit the notification button, tell a friend to tell a friend, watch the clip plays. Let it play over and 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 over in your head. Remember, don't worry about the puppy pregnancy. Understand and have the knowledge of the elephant that your blessing is going to, when it's delivered, it's going to move the earth. It's going to be that impactful. It's going to be admired. It's going to be looked at as, as luxurious and grand. So have the patience. Don't worry about, don't worry about birth, birthing them puppies. Don't worry about them dozen puppies. Worry about that one elephant. All right? Appreciate you guys, man. Remember, eliminate the contingencies. I'm out!